Good morning. Welcome to the general chemistry lab. Today we are going to determine Avogadro's number by electrolysis. First, let's review what Avogadro's number is. In class, I told you that one uh, one mole equal to Avogadro's number, or in other words, one mole equal to six point zero two two times uh, ten to the ten third power. Okay. In other words. Avogadro number is just a number. Okay, when we say you have a one mole of electrons, then you have a 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd electrons. If you have one mole of copper, then you should have a 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, copper. If you have one more of uh, CH4, you should have this many number of uh, CH4. In other words, one more one more is not equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 electrons. No, one more electron equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 electrons. Okay. I want you to make sure you understand uh, Avogadro number is just a number. It doesn't have a unit. So, in experiment, uh, you may wonder, I'm not sure if you ever wonder, how do people get this weird number? It's not like one or hundred or, it's not even a whole number. How did the people get this? So, there are many different me methods available for us to use. Today, we're going to use electrolysis to determine what really this number is if we trust our measurements. If we trust our measurements. Remember, we don't know this one, Avogadro number, Avogadro number equal to what? We don't know. So, we need to look for this one. We need to look for this one. So, uh, the experiment method, uh, if we can count count the number of electrons and then if you know how many moles of electron how many moles of electron then we should be fine it should be fine so in this case the Avogadro number would be equal to the moles of uh, the number of electrons divided by the moles of electron, of electron. But then you may wonder, how do we count how many electrons? Yes, this is very challenging. If you count from one, two, three, I guess probably not, not guess. I'm pretty sure even if you can count 10 numbers per second, you cannot finish one mole before you die. So, this is a huge number. Then, we cannot do it that way. So, if there are any other methods, we can count them without spending our whole life to do that. Uh, let's look at the experimental setup. For this experiment, you have a beaker, you have a beaker, and this beaker contains a solution of copper to sulfate. You put copper to sulfate into this solution, uh, into this beaker, and then you put in two electrodes. Uh, both of them are copper electrodes, and then uh, since this method is called electrolysis, you have to have a power supply. And this power supply is a DC power supply. So it has positive and negative. This is positive and this is negative. And we know that from physics, electron will flow through from the negative, go to the positive. Go to the positive. And then copper sulfate 
when you put them into solution because this is an ionic compound it will produce uh, ions which can be copper and sulfate ions sulfate ions because this side is negative it has electron flow through here so the cation will be attracted on this side and then this side you will uh, attract the anion, anion. Uh, okay and then when the electron meet a cation what will happen it turns out that when a copper 2 plus ion this is aqueous phase when it meets two electrons it will form a copper element which is a solid which is solid and the solid generally it will be deposited on the surface of the copper electrode and on the other side on the other side you may wonder can like uh, a positron appear here and react with this unfortunately we don't have that so what will happen is the copper electrode it will lose electrons and then to form uh, copper two ions in the aqueous phase in other words some of the copper will dissolve into the solution so if it dissolves then the mass will decrease and then for the other electrode the mass will increase let's call the change of the mass for the first one let's call this delta m1 and let's call this one called delta m2 uh, delta m1 is the mass different before the electrolysis and after an, uh, electrolysis and this is similar so theoretically because the number of electrons flow through the circuit should be the same no matter where uh, where is it whether this electrode or this electrode or here or here it should be the same it should be the same so uh, which can tell us that delta m1 should be equal to delta m2 but in experiment sometimes when you have a uh, when you have a, a reaction here to form a copper solid sometimes it just uh, lost to the solution it will not stick to the electrode so in, in the case when delta m1 delta m2 they have very big difference then you want to use delta m2 delta m2 because if you lose then this is less likely to produce error and then uh, in this experiment how do we find the number of electrons flow through this circuit flow this circuit and then how do we find the most electrons to solve this problem we need two pieces of two pieces of, uh, of information one part from physics the other part is from chemistry I'm going to tell you both in order to fi figure out the number of electrons through the circuit we have to find out the charge first in, uh, in physics we learned that the charge which the unit is coulomb it's equal to the current uh, the unit is ampere this you can read out directly from the uh, uh, from a meter from a meter and then you can multiply the time in seconds and this will give give you the coulomb coulomb in chapter 2 we learned that for a single electron for a single electron the charge is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb and then whenever you see an equal relationship you immediately get two conversion factors one is one electron on top and then 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb at the bottom the other one is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb divided by a single electron so you get two common factors because we're looking for the number of electrons so we have to pick we have to pick which one and if you know how to do this you will get the answer like this so the charge 
the charge coulomb, then if you use the first one, 6 to 10 to the 19 coulomb, and then a single electron, a single electron. So this coulomb tells you that, yes, this, you made the right, right choice. You, cho you have chosen the correct convert factor. And then I want to combine with this equation, then the answer will be the current in ampere and then multiply the time in seconds and then multiply the convert factor we just get one single electron and 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 hold on okay this from physics we can get the number of electrons from the current and time current and time uh, I'm going to put this here current in ampere 